KMPL.ca newsroom for this week. Marty Thompson, Charlie O'Connor Clark back another week in isolation here in Ontario. <laughs> another day in paradise. <laughs> it's been a long time. Oh, what, yeah. what do you, what do, what do you do? What do you do? What, what do I do? Yeah. I, that's the thing. Not a lot I sit here. I, you know, I look out the window. There's <laughs> like, I get, there's like a truck outside my house right now. Uh, cutting branches out of a electrical pole that's actually I, kind of fun yeah 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 if i if i was filming on like a, a phone or a camera or something i'd turn it around because it's actually kind of interesting but uh <laughs> but he, they've, they've only been there once this is their first time or they're there yeah. every day no, no no he's just here today i think you guys lucked out <laughs> we're recording <laughs> yes, on, on toronto hydro's uh day to cut down trees and <laughs> <laughs> fix this poll i don't know sorry anyway yeah. <laughs> that yeah the audience is the really the audience is really the ones who benefit from this conversation oh yeah it's great podcasting here's what's going on in front of me all right well it's friday we've got the weekend ahead of us which allows us to do more of nothing but before we do that uh let's quickly talk about what's happened in the cpl and canadian soccer this week uh a big one in the cpl world would be drew becky joining athletic ottawa another um, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, a, a player that's played on multiple occasions, uh, in, in multiple stints, and a player in Canadian soccer circles, especially at the pro level, and is coming to Ottawa. A very impressive uh, career in the USL as well like can you maybe talk a little bit about you know who drew becky is and and potentially what he could do to this back line because i think it really makes ottawa much stronger at the back yeah it definitely looks a lot better with kind of that veteran guy in the middle of it drew becky has been around north american professional soccer a really long time uh i think he's got something like 140 150 professional games and like the nasl and, and usl sorts of levels which, as, as we've said before, translate pretty well to the CPL. Um, and he's kind of like Chris Manella. He's played in Ottawa before. Uh, he's going to be well-known to the fans. Uh, he's going to be a guy that I think everybody likes. <laughs> uh, you would hope. <laughs> you would hope. Like, I, th I, think, I think Ottawa fans would be really happy with him, especially the ones who are happy to have him back. Um, but, yeah, that's... It's a it's a very important kind of player to have. I mean, Drew Becky is just going to be a very calming presence, I think, at the back for what's likely to be a fairly young team. I mean, they probably won't be particularly unfamiliar with each other anymore because they'll have been in Spain together for a really long time. Um, but it's it's just it just makes the whole back line look a lot stronger. Uh, I mean, we could we could form a back four from the roster without him. Uh, just about there are probably like five defenders, uh, kind of in there that that we would be able to comfortably put to a back line. But now with Drew Becky there, you've got a lot more depth, and so maybe him and and either Brandon John or or Milovan Kapoor in a a center back pairing is pretty pretty strong. I say, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely, and. and I think they've still got a long way to go in terms of their defensive additions as well. Like we were talking a little bit this week about how, you know, it's Zach Verhoeven and uh, Ferdinand from, from Montreal can play uh, at right back. And you're wondering if maybe there's going to be a different option, especially if they wanted to play Zach a little bit further forward. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely something to, to look forward to uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we can also talk about uh, Drew uh, forecasting his move to the CPL with a tweet in January of this year. <laughs> Uh, when Campiel.ca put out an article of the top free agents that could move to the CPL, and he replied with a waving uh, emoji, which uh, th that was that was a tough one to see from our perspective because it's like, oh, I guess we missed someone. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. I mean, I don't. Was he a free agent at the time? I guess he must have been. Well, it, I I believe he had signed at that point, so he was just having a bit of fun. But Maybe. for those checking on Twitter, you can get more than one Drew Becky Easter egg over the last couple months. The other one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other video, uh, he was uh, speaking in support of the Saskatchewan CPL team, prospective CPL team, uh, obviously with the addition of a stadium. 
Um, and we got some more renderings this week. Uh, I'll just pull them up here shortly on video here, Charlie. But like, it's 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 just cool and maybe just a bit sur like surreal to see a stadium look like this, but you know, be in Saskatchewan, right? To be to be like not to not obviously this isn't uh, anything you know, no flack against Saskatchewan, but it's just like it shows how far like this stuff is coming, right? It, you know that we have full stadium renderings. Yeah, yeah, it looks really cool um it looks like the the renderings we've seen so far they look like a proper you know professional soccer stadium that you would see in some of the biggest soccer countries in the world right for mm -hmm. for that size of team um obviously we still want to see it in real life it has to be built which is you know <laughs> as we know it's a long process yes it is it's really, really, really cool to just think about it and to and to see it. And I'm sure there it is. And I'm sure it's <laughs> even cooler for people in Saskatchewan thinking about it. Uh, oh, most I'm, certainly. I am wondering how many, you know, how many <laughs> really poorly missed shots are going to end up in that pond. Which yeah, will be fun. I, <laughs> I, I didn't want I didn't want to call too much into the the design. Uh, yeah, it looks like a pond or it or it could be part of the south saskatchewan river that i know runs along there uh Maybe. yeah it uh, <laughs> there there will be some uh there will be some interesting elements to the stadium because I, I really like the north end as well and how it sort of sticks out um mm -hmm. uh, uh coming out of that one side but again yeah i mean lots moving forward uh in terms of the stadium front uh i'll try to pull up the other rendering that we have sorry this is kind of a Kind of a mess. There we go. This is coming from the uh, from the the northwest side, I believe. So yeah, it looks great, uh, and definitely more to look out for from from the Saskatchewan group. Hopefully, in the next couple of weeks, uh, as things get mm -hmm. moving there. Um, other than that, I mean, it's been kind of a quiet week in Canadian soccer, save for we should mention Toronto FC dropping out of the uh, Concacaf Champions League to cruise Azul uh, over two legs. Uh, Charlie, I, I'm not sure if you stayed up to watch the rest of that second leg, but, uh, a bit of an unceremonious exit considering how TFC really, really came out and, and performed quite well against Club Leon in, in the first round, right? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's definitely going to be disappointing for anybody. Um, obviously a lot of players are missing though. Uh, and at that point, there's not a lot more you can ask for when you throw a bunch of young players out against one of the best teams on the continent. But it worked last time. It did work last time. <laughs> but your luck runs out eventually. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's too bad to see that uh, run and short. Uh, quickly, before we switch over to Nico Giantsopoulos, uh, you can see in the episode description, he's got a new podcast out. Uh, it's called The Last Line. It's it's made with York United. Very well produced, by the way. And it's all about goalkeepers. The subscribe link is, is in the description of this podcast. Uh, and also in the description of the YouTube um, uh, video, if you haven't, uh, if you're if you're watching this, you talk to Anthony Novak of Cavalry mm -hmm. FC. He's driving out to Calgary. We've covered this on the pod uh, now for a couple weeks. First off, is he alive? He is. He absolutely <laughs> is. Um, man, Anthony Novak of Cavalry FC still sounds weird to me, but I'll have to get used to it. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I spoke to him on the phone last night. He was in in Swift Current. Um, and it, and it sounds like he's getting into Calgary. We're recording on Friday. It sounds like he's getting into Calgary today. Um, apparently it's the, the shortest leg of his drive so far from mid Saskatchewan to, to Calgary, but yeah, he's had some, some pretty crazy experiences so far, uh, kind of pulling off on the side of the road and in, in Northern Ontario to jump in a lake to, uh, his, his car not starting at one point and, uh, that what? would definitely panic you a lot. Apparently, he was somewhere like way up in Ontario. I can't remember if it was Wawa or, or Dryden or something like that. Um, but yeah, apparently he was getting gas and it just didn't turn on. <laughs> <laughs> so that that would be a reason to panic. But it it's apparently all good now. Um, yeah, yeah. No, he had uh, he has lots of great stories that I will uh, have to kind of sift through this afternoon to <laughs> put them all in a row. <laughs> yeah. That's Charlie's assignment to get a story out by tomorrow on Anthony Novak's travels. Might be, might be 2,500 words. <laughs> might, Maybe. Yeah. It'd be close. <laughs> uh, okay. Before we uh, switch over to, to Nico, just quickly, the all state soccer show is coming up at the end of the month. 
Uh, you can go ahead and sign up for that. I'll be moderating a, a couple panels with uh, Alan Kosh, SC Edmonton head coach, and Tommy Wilden Jr. of Cavalry. That's going to be fun to pivot those two together. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't, they really don't have that much history, unfortunately, playing each other, but uh, I'll make them hate one another <laughs> by the end of it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then also there's there's a great uh, player panel talking about, you know, player development and the player pathway. Like we were talking about it before, like Halifax Wanderers, uh, Peter Schall. We've got Shami Cho of FC Edmonton, David Norman Jr. of Cavalry. Like the, the, the it just kind of goes to show like it's going to be an interesting conversation anyways, because they all have different pathways. Right. Like they all have. Mm-hmm. It, we've talked about this at length, like every the, that's maybe one of the most intriguing parts of this league for me in the off season, we have no games to talk about, which seems to be all the time uh, is just the different ways that players come to the league. Right. And mm-hmm. in the different pathways that they choose. So anyways, that's all going to be the all state soccer show coming up at the end of the month. Go ahead and sign up and be on Sunday, uh, May 30th. We're joined by York United's Nico giant goalkeeper and now podcast host. We were just talking before we went on air, Nico. You know, we're now colleagues. We're now equals in the <laughs> podcast space. And uh, I, I'll, I'll, I was shocked to to learn that you started a podcast. I'm just kidding. You're perfect, demo. All makes, about goalkeeping. Makes complete sense. <laughs> <laughs> the last line. All you interview goalkeepers. You know, you're a goalkeeper yourself. There's been some incredible interviews already, like Stephanie LaBay, Aaron McLeod of the Canadian Women's National Team. Those, those uh, Sasha Hislop, who's a, a, a goalkeeper from from England, who's from Trinidad and Tobago, um, and a lot more episodes coming out. Maybe just give people like a rundown of what this podcast is, produced by York yeah. United, I should say. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, I mean, that's it. We're we're interviewing different goalkeepers, talking about you know the pressures that come with the position. Uh, I think goalkeepers are a unique bunch. Uh, so with that, we have a bunch of stories that we accumulate throughout our careers. Uh, so we want the you know the guests to share those stories as well. But uh, hopefully, the the listeners get a better understanding of the position and uh, kind of get a feel of what it's like uh, to be a goalkeeper, especially at uh, such high levels. <laughs> How did it? kind of come about like was this something that you always sort of wanted to do or or kind of was the club's idea like it's just such an interesting idea just have keepers talk to other keepers right yeah i mean i've been told that i have a i have a face for podcasts (laughs) um but no owen kind of reached out to me asked if i would ever be interested i was like yeah i mean i'd love to start a new project it seemed uh, interesting I, i know a decent amount about goalkeeping uh so i just kind of uh was open to the idea and then they kind of really ran with it uh, and as it kept, you know, building and building, I really liked the idea. So it's been fun. We're kind of just starting, but, uh, you know, I get better each day and uh, soon I'll be the next Joe Rogan. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's something you want to aspire to, unless you want the Spotify deal. You want Spotify I, th- I just want tons and tons of money. So <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I want to be. Uh, so the, like, what do you, what are some of your personal highlights from these interviews? Cause listening back to them um yesterday like stephanie LeBay opening up about you know the the depression that she, and, and and the and the the um what she faced after the olympics right and she talked quite candidly about that right you have aaron mcleod talking about you know how she saw i, I wasn't familiar with that athlete from like was it the calgary games where she, you know she saw a, a, a female win a gold medal or, or perform well on tv and she just said i'm gonna be an athlete doesn't matter the sport i'm gonna yeah, go to the figure olympics. skater yeah, yeah, it's figure skater. So what like what are some of your personal highlights from these interviews? I mean, for one, it's just been awesome how uh, honest the guests have been. Uh, the first three guests that we've had, Steph, Aaron, and Shaka, uh, they're so intelligent and the way they speak, they articulate their thoughts so well. Um, so yeah, them being honest, uh, they, they get into some personal stuff, which I obviously appreciate. And it's very, you know, courageous of them to, uh, to talk about those, uh, stories. Uh, I think there's a good contrast between the three guests. Um, I think, you know, Aaron and Steph do a really good job touching on mental health and kind of the anxieties and pressures that a goalkeeper may face. Um, but then Shaka, you know, he played in the English Premier League at such a high level and, and he's dealt with, uh, you know, racism uh, back in the day in the, in the earlier uh, in the earlier days playing back in England. So, you know, we cover such uh, big, important issues that are that are still issues uh, nowadays. Um, so that's kind of been the, the most interesting part uh, about starting this podcast. Hmm. 
I think one of the things that's really cool is that you guys just had three of them to come out at once, right? So we're not you know, <laughs> sitting around waiting for more of them, but that's obviously not the end, right? You've got lots more coming out, like without giving too much away. Um, what what's coming up with with some of these other guests that you've you've spoken to? Yeah, I mean, I got told to come on this show so I could tease it uh, as much as I can. But exactly. we got some great, we got some great guests coming up. Um, we got more uh, high-level Canadian goalkeepers. Uh, we have a guest that has died and come back to life uh, in the middle of a game. So uh, that story is incredible. Uh, we have uh, ex-Manchester United goalkeepers. Uh, yeah, just. Just more and more exciting stories, and we're really covering all bases from death to uh, yeah, playing for Manchester United. Uh, Two but, things in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, death taxes and playing for Manchester United. Uh, you talk a lot about, like, and this is something interesting as someone who did not play as a goalkeeper at any level other than, you know, like you kind of, there's funny how many guests you have actually that just say, oh, yeah, I started playing goal because, like, someone said, go in net, please. I don't want to go. <laughs> It's very funny. <laughs> um, you talk a lot about like the, like some of the like interesting sort of like quirks about focusing and 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 trying to like stay in in like mindsets and 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 being on the field. Like you tell a story about. It. Did you take this from? Was it Martin Brodeur, like the the, the NHL goalie, where you uh, like squirted water and you watch it come out of the water bottle or something? Like what's that? Yeah. You- <laughs> I mean, for one, I mean, I think goalkeeping is such a mental position. I mean, we could be as athletic as we want, but if we're not tuned in mentally, uh, it's really tough to be successful in the position. But, uh, yeah, the one thing I got from a hockey goalie was, you know, a Gatorade bottle. You squirt it up in the air, and then water separates as it does, and it turns into little droplets, and you try to find one droplet and just follow it all the way down till it uh, hits the ground. Again, just a way of kind of zoning in, finding one little one, and uh, – yeah, I mean, it could be all be in my head. It might not work at all. But, I mean, I've well, been I mean, doing it, it for a while now, and uh, I don't mind it. Well, it's whatever works, right? And clearly, like these keepers all have different things that work. It doesn't. Yeah, it, it's it's just a very interesting sort of set. Yeah, a lot of superstitions and stuff too, right? I mean, yeah. Like, what's the weirdest goalkeeper superstition <laughs> or weirdest? Like, I know goalkeepers get a bad rap for being weird in all sports, but like, what's the like strangest sort of like superstition <laughs> or something that people do? That I have or that I know that, that you've ever heard of that you've heard of. Does someone kick one post twice and the other once? <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I remember that like back in like youth days, like when you're just like so hyped up and you try to do all these like crazy things. Um, <laughs> so I don't really know anything uh, that comes to mind. With, yeah, too many crazy goalkeepers that were <laughs> crazy superstitious. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, so we'll get into a bit of a game here before we let you go. Um, something Stephanie mentioned, a love of other sports, a love of other activities that sort of got her with a different mindset and a different skill set for goalkeeping. What we're going to do is we're going to show you some activities and you're going to give us whether or not you think any goalkeepers watching should sort of take this up in their part time because it may improve their skills. Okay. Understood? Okay. Understood. First one's pretty, first one's pretty easy. Boxing. 100%. Just for the punching? For the punching, a bit of cardio, explosiveness, uh, quick reflexes, uh, fast twitch. Uh, they all go hand in hand. And if somebody you know, scores on you and they get in your face, you can knock them out. <laughs> if you need to. It's good to have in a back pocket. <laughs> Is, what, what do you say, Charlie? It's like those are the two sports that count punches. Yeah. The only, like, the only sports where you'll have like, you know, a stat category for how many times you punched something. <laughs> Okay, this one's easy, and then we'll get into some of the silly stuff. I just pulled this from a YouTube thumbnail. Guided meditation. <laughs> um, so useful, but I wouldn't do it too close to game time. Because when I'm thinking like meditation, I'm getting like quiet, calm. And for me, I like to be a bit like more up, exciting, you know, communicating, talking around. So <laughs> visualizing, meditating. Maybe the day before or like night game, you do it in the morning, first thing in the morning. Okay, fair enough. All right, now some more uh, strange stuff. Uh, running down a hill after the <laughs> Wheel of Cheese in England. 
Oh, um, I mean, it gets you used to hitting the ground, which we do a lot as goalkeepers. So learning how to dive and embracing for impact. So I'm going to say, yeah. And if any other CPL goalkeepers want to do that, by all means, try it out and, and let me know how it works. <laughs> uh Anyone looking, uh, listening at home, go on YouTube and try to find a clip of that that doesn't say like injuries in the title. <laughs> so, okay, uh, this one was uh, this one was handed to us by our Campiel contributor Benedict. Uh, ostrich racing. Am I the am I the ostrich or is there someone on top? Of You're the someone maybe maybe just like I'm, I'm thinking you could be like you know rodeo you know either horse racing balance anything like that. Yep, definitely core. I mean ostriches don't seem. Like they're all that, you know, so you got to be up there. Like, <laughs> so um, I'm going to say again, good goalkeeping. You know, it's a, it's a well-rounded position. So you got to be good at everything. Okay. Including and, uh, ostrich. Including ostrich. Ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One more. This one's got sound. This is one of my favorite esports freakouts. So we have to watch it. Yo, like this, this game is so goddamn bad, bro. Oh my gosh. Stop. Getting out of his head right now. <laughs> esports. Would esports no. be good? No. Because no. because you get like that, you get angry. <laughs> yeah, you get angry and it's not real life. It's it's virtual reality. And if you're getting that worked up over it, <laughs> that's, that's not sock. The goalkeeping's not for you. <laughs> but the reaction times, that's what always that's what people always say. That's what gamers always say. Reaction yeah. times are really good. Yeah, but I mean, find me a uh, professional gamer and you know bring him to goalkeeper training. Let's see how he does. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> thanks for playing that with us, Nico. Uh, give us a quick little uh, look ahead for the podcast. I know you mentioned the the episode with someone dying. Uh, what what else can people look forward to with the last line presented by York United? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, some great stories. Uh, Again, I think as the, the episodes keep going, I think I'm going to get a lot more comfortable as being a host. Um, and I just think some, you know, a lot of like going back and forth and, and hopefully we keep, uh, it's cool because the goalkeepers that we're having, they're all from different eras. You know, we have people from, you know, the fifties, we have people from the sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, you know, and, and even current goalkeepers. So to kind of get their idea of, of how the position has changed, uh, how much soccer has changed and really uh, the lifestyle, uh, how much it varies from different leagues. Um, it's really uh, some interesting stuff. And uh, yeah, the, the next one that's coming up, like I said, the guy died. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say all the stuff that he's been through, but it's, it, he's, he's definitely in contention to be the most interesting man in the world. Um, and if you're going to listen to uh, any episode, uh, please give this one a listen. Cause I think uh, even if you're not into soccer, uh, You'll, you'll be into it. Oh, love it. Thank you very much, Nico. Again, subscribe to The Last Line wherever you get your podcasts.